It is officially day 5 of OpenAI's shipments. So far, we've gotten OpenAI's full O1 model, ChatGPT Pro, reinforcement fine tuning for developers, Sora, Canvas, and today on day 5, we got ChatGPT and Apple Intelligence. In this video, we'll take a look at everything new from this week, as well as some recent developments on what's to potentially come next. Next, Google introduces Willow, their breakthrough state of the art quantum chip. Not only can it reduce errors exponentially as they scale up using more qubits, which solves a key challenge in quantum error correction that the field has pursued for almost 30 years, but Willow can also perform a standard benchmark computation in under 5 minutes that would take one of today's fastest supercomputers 10 septillion years, a number that vastly exceeds the age of the universe. Lastly, Amazon is launching a new AGI lab focused on AI that can actually take actions for us in the digital and physical worlds. They are essentially working on AI agents here, which have already begun to disrupt digital labor. So on day 3 of OpenAI shipments, which was this Monday, December 9th, they released Sora to all ChatGPT Plus users. Unfortunately, even though I have a Plus account, I wasn't able to set up a Sora account due to the insanely high traffic they're receiving. If we look at OpenAI's day 3 livestream though, we can see them show off Sora, which is more than just a video model, it's really a whole suite of video generation and editing tools. Here we can see some advanced control features like aspect ratio, resolution, and even duration. Sora can generate videos up to 1080p, anywhere from 5 to 20 25 seconds in length in multiple variations at once. For now, Plus users can only generate up to 50 videos at 480p and even less at 720p, but if you have the $200 per month pro plan, then these constraints don't apply to you. They also showed off a new feature called Storyboard that they claim is still in its very early stages. With Storyboard, you get a timeline where you can sequence actions in a scene in any order you want. So here he writes, a beautiful white crane with a yellow tail stands in a creek. Followed by an action, the crane dips into the water and pulls out a fish. This is the result. So here, let's pop into one of these and we can see. All right, so we see about halfway through, my crane is dipping its head into the water. You can see if it grabs a fish. Oh, looks like it missed on that one. Can review another one of these too. But you see that Sora has taken my direction and it's done a pretty good job at understanding exactly where it wants to go. And both of these cranes, they may have missed the I fish. I got a little fish that one. Yeah, I got a little fish. <laughs> So definitely still some minor issues there, but remember, this is the absolute worst it'll ever be. Another cool feature they showed before we move on to day four was the ability to expand generations. So I'm gonna go ahead and use another editing tool here called ReCut that allows me to take my video, trim it down, and extend it in a storyboard with even more direction. So clicking ReCut has taken me into a new storyboard and Sora has imported this video of the crane and now I can see on the timeline my video here, I can scrub through it to review it, and I can also trim my video. So I think I like, actually I'm gonna take this uh, first few seconds right until its head splashes into the water, I like that. And so much like in the other storyboard examples, any area that I leave empty here, story will seamlessly continue from whatever storyboard card I have in there. So if I want an entirely new ending, I can leave the end blank and I can go ahead and hit create. If I want an entirely new beginning, let's say I wanted this at the end of my scene, I can leave this here and maybe it will, the camera will stay on the crane for a little bit more in the beginning. I can also move it into the middle and generate entirely new endings and beginnings for all of my videos. So overall, I'm impressed with the user interface. The actual generations are obviously incredible and better than any other video model out there, but the advanced customization and control features along with a simple and easy to use UI makes this overall a really good product and I understand why the demand for this was so massive. Now on day four, OpenAI releases Canvas, a new way to work with ChatGPT to draft, edit, and get feedback on writing and code, now available to all users in our 4.0 model. So when you're using GPT-4.0 with Canvas, there's gonna be a second window that pops up alongside your chat logs. This second window is where you and ChatGPT can collaborate with each other on various projects. Think of it like working with a coworker or a classmate on a shared document, one that never sleeps and does everything you say. In this example, they've asked ChatGPT to generate a story, and as you can see in the bottom right, you have some advanced control features once again, like suggest edits, adjust length, change reading level, final polish, and add emojis. All very self-explanatory features and obviously super helpful for not only writing stories, 
stories, but essays, letters, pretty much anything. You can also now run Python code directly in Canvas and let ChatGPT fix any bugs based on console errors. So here I typed in create snake game Python, it automatically turns into Canvas mode and starts writing the code. Now I can actually go ahead and run the code, but before I do that, we have even more advanced control features on the bottom right side once again. Here you have port to a different language with these to choose from, fix bugs, add logs, and add comments. So I think everything looks good here, let's go ahead and run this. So for some reason I couldn't get this to work, it could be that my device simply can't handle running this. But essentially, if your computer is good enough, a playable snake game would pop up here and you can then customize and make changes to it by simply telling ChatGPT what you want in your natural language. So again, I apologize for it not working, but you can see how this would be extremely helpful for developers as well as people who are just getting into coding. Now, just today on day five of OpenAI Shipmas, they announced ChatGPT's integration with Apple Intelligence. So this is something we knew was coming, ChatGPT being integrated directly into your Apple phone. You can access it directly through Siri with a simple press on the side of your phone, assuming you already have an iPhone 16 or newer. One of the things they showed was Siri's vision capabilities, which isn't the same thing as advanced voice mode with vision, but it's similar. As you can see, you can ask about your environment by taking a snapshot of it and then typing out your query. Here's an example. So let's zoom in on our little picture here, and I'm going to press this ask button, and that'll ask ChatGPT directly. First thing it's going to do is it's just going to like identify some of the things going on in the picture. My poor Santa's got covered, so we'll see how this goes. Um, we're having a Christmas sweater contest. Make that on the left, Dave in the middle, and Sam on the right. Uh, rank judge? Judge. Uh, yeah. Rank. Because uh, we, we don't judge. We listen, but we rank, don't that's judge. Right. <laughs> uh, rank us from most to least fun. All right, moment of truth here. <laughs> Sam wins? Nah, file a bug for that. <laughs> <laughs> So these capabilities are going to be available with all newer Apple products, even the new Macs. You can think of this as simply a more seamless way to use ChatGPT integrated directly into your device. Now again, there is nothing inherently new here. The vision capabilities you get with Siri that they just demoed aren't the same thing as advanced voice mode with vision, which is supposed to be in real time. So hopefully that's coming soon. Now in terms of what to expect next, for a brief moment under the ChatGPT team plan, one of the things it listed was limited preview of GPT 4.5. This was quickly deleted, but it's pretty much confirmation that GPT 4.5 is a thing, and it could definitely be one of the things dropping in these next seven weekdays. Advanced voice mode with vision is also something I expect to see launched any day now. Just recently, OpenAI's president, Greg Brockman, demoed this during a segment on how AI is transforming education, featured on 60 Minutes. So this is probably the thing I'm most excited about, advanced voice with vision, besides maybe agents, I really hope we get it during these 12 days of OpenAI Christmas. Now, I saw a few comments from last video asking about how O1 Pro has been performing performing on various benchmarks, and because the API is not available yet, there hasn't been any official testing done. Based on some unofficial testing though by one of the creators of the Arc AGI challenge, O1 Pro is looking roughly two times better than O1 Preview. This seems to hold up based on what I've seen from other people who've used the model. In fact, a lot of people, especially developers, are freaking out about how good this model actually is. O1 Pro is probably the best model I've used for coding, hands down. I gave it a pretty complicated code base and asked it to refactor while referencing docs. The difference between Claude, Gemini, O1, and O1 Pro is night and day. First time in a while I've been this impressed. Here's another one. Tech debt deflation is here. O1 Pro just solved an incredibly complicated slash painful rewrite of a file that no other model has ever gotten close to. We've entered the why fix your code today when better model will do it tomorrow regime. And one more. OpenAI O1 Pro is significantly better than I anticipated. This is the first time a model's come out and been so good that it kind of shocked me. I screenshotted Coinbase and had four popular models write code to clone it in one shot. Guess which one was O1 Pro? So it looks like O1 Pro and the full O1 model are noticeably better than the previous O1 Preview model and can do things that no other model has ever been capable of. I'll still make sure to update you guys on its performance on various benchmarks once those results become available. In other news, Grok now has a new image generator called Aurora. This model has no constraints on who you can generate and can create hyper-realistic images of celebrities like these. Obviously there's limits to what you can have these celebrities do in these images, but this is 
is something most AI image models simply don't allow. This did stir up a little bit of controversy. I saw people talking about privacy concerns and safety issues, but let me know what you guys think about this. Do you think we should be able to generate images or even videos of celebrities that look this realistic? Let me know in the comments. Now, while we're speaking of XAI's Grok, XAI CEO, who is Elon Musk, has been making some progress with Tesla's humanoid robot Optimus. Here is the first video we've seen of Optimus out and about in the wild, walking on uneven grounds like these grassy hills. At one point, it even falls and manages to catch itself. This is actually really impressive. If these robots are truly going to be living amongst us, they're going to have to get used to the chaos and unpredictability of our world. Optimus already being able to walk up and down hills and recover on its own to avoid a fall in real time is a major step closer towards that reality. While we're on the topic of AI and robotics, a research team in China built a robotic rat and trained it using AI to behave like a real rat. This robot rat was designed meticulously to give it the same appearance and dynamic range of motion as a biological rat. It learned some of the most prominent behaviors in rats through reinforcement learning and by simply watching videos of real rats interacting with each other. Once the rat was actually put into a cage with a real biological rat, they found that the rats responded to it as expected, treating it basically the exact same as if it were just another normal rat. So the question is, will human beings see humanoid robots as just another rat or just another human if it can mimic human behavior extremely well? And also, will we ever even get to that point? Personally, I like to think that we're a lot more perceptive than rats, but I mean 10 or even 20 years down the line, who knows how realistic these humanoid robots will be. Now, we have to talk about Google's breakthrough quantum chip, Willow. As I mentioned at the start of the video, Willow enabled two major achievements. First, the ability to reduce errors exponentially as they scale up qubits, and second, performing a computation in five minutes that would take one of the world's fastest supercomputers 10 to the power of 25 years to complete. So that first achievement is surprisingly more impressive than the second one because they show that the more qubits they use in Willow, the more they reduce errors, and the more quantum the system becomes. By the way, qubits are essentially like normal computer bits, except they can exist in multiple states at once. Kind of like Schrodinger's cat, where you have a cat in a box with something that might kill it, and until you observe it and actually open the box, you can't know for sure whether the cat is dead or alive, and therefore it is essentially both dead and alive at the same time. That is essentially how you can think of qubits, there's obviously a lot more going on, but the point is this historic accomplishment, being able to drive errors down while scaling up the number of qubits, has been an outstanding challenge since 1995. And in reference to the second achievement, the computation that it was able to complete in only 5 minutes that would take a supercomputer longer than the age of the universe, they state, This mind-boggling number exceeds known timescales in physics and vastly exceeds the age of the universe. It lends credence to the notion that quantum computation occurs in many parallel universes in line with the idea that we live in a multiverse, a prediction first made by David Deutsch. So, I mean, things are getting really crazy. Not only is AI progress exponentially accelerating, but now we're starting to see movement in the field of quantum mechanics, which is only going to add to the scaffolding of immense technological progress. Google had some other announcements this week as well, which are nowhere near as significant as Willow, but they announced Vio and Imogen 3. These are both going to be available on Google's Vertex AI. Vio is their video generation model. As you can see, it can also generate videos from images. The quality looks decent, but of course Sora is still much better. And Imogen 3, their image generator also looks pretty good. At this point, there's a ton of state-of-the-art image models that generate hyper-realistic images of humans like this, so nothing we haven't seen before. One more thing from Google this week, they introduced a weather forecaster called GenCast. Today in Nature, we're presenting GenCast, our new AI weather model which gives us the probabilities of different weather conditions up to 15 days ahead with state-of-the-art accuracy. GenCast is able to generate a single 15-day scenario in 8 minutes on a single TPU chip. When predicting extreme heat, cold, and high wind speeds, it consistently outperformed the current best operational forecast known as ENS. So I thought this was pretty cool, using AI to predict weather patterns seems like a no-brainer. I hope this gets adopted quickly so it can start saving lives. In other AI news, DeepSeek version 2.5 now has search capabilities. This is the Chinese model that claims to perform on par with OpenAI's O1 and is based off the same new scaling paradigm of test time compute. You can now use it to search on the web, which is something a lot of AI companies have started to experiment with. Now, do you guys remember Humane, the company that created that really expensive AI pin that was popular for a few weeks until people started actually receiving them and realized that it wasn't what it was cracked up to be? Well, now they are introducing Cosm OS an AI operating system built for a universe of connected devices. So this is essentially just a software behind the humane pin that can connect to various devices like speakers, phones, cars, and TVs. Here in the demo, you can see the guy using it with a speaker to help him cook like a voice assistant. Then they show that it's also able to understand your TV screen and answer questions in real time based on what's being displayed. How many goals has he scored this season? I didn't have to specify the player. 
Cosmos is just using the context of what's on the screen to answer. Edson Arantes has scored five goals this season. Great. Now I can just get back to my guac. So you get the idea. I mean, this is cool and all, but I can see this easily being replaced by Apple Siri or Google's Gemini in a few years. Finally, Amazon is opening up a new AGI lab focused on long-term research bets. They state here, the Amazon AGI San Francisco lab is designed to empower AI researchers and engineers to make major breakthroughs with speed and focus toward this goal. Our philosophy combines the agility of a startup with the resources of Amazon. By keeping the team lean, we're able to maximize the amount of compute per person. Each team in the lab has the autonomy to move fast and the long-term commitment to pursue high-risk, high-payoff research. And further, the new lab is seeded by our team recently hired from Adept and will leverage their pioneering work in building AI agents that can handle complex workflows using the same tools we as humans, like computers, web browsers, and code interpreters. Our initial focus is on several key research bets that will enable AI agents to perform real-world actions, learn from human feedback, self-course correct, and infer our goals. In particular, we are really excited about the work in combining large language models with reinforcement learning to solve reasoning and planning, learned world models, and generalizing agents to physical environments. So this sounds very interesting. When you have a small, highly talented team with access to a lot of resources like this, I feel like the possibility of innovation and the creation of something truly novel is much greater. They're also currently looking to hire people from various fields, including physics, math, and even finance, to bring a fresh perspective to the field of AI. So again, sounds really interesting. We'll definitely be keeping up with this, and it seems like Amazon is truly going all in on AI. As I talked about in my last video, they just invested another $4 billion into Anthropic, and of course they just came out with their own line of state-of-the-art AI models called Amazon Nova. So these AI agents that Amazon is trying to build, and really that everyone in the AI space is now trying to build, have already been producing results for companies like Salesforce. According to their CEO, Mark Benioff, Agent Force just became available on October 24th, and we're already seeing this incredible velocity, more than 200 Agent Force deals just in Q3. The pipeline is in the thousands for potential transactions that are coming up in future quarters, he named FedEx, Adico, Accenture, Ace Hardware, IBM, and RBC Wealth Management as Agent Force customers. Benioff also recently told TechCrunch that he expects Salesforce customers to deploy 1 billion AI agents within the next year, and that AI agents will allow companies to have an unlimited workforce. These agents are not tools, they are becoming collaborators. They're working 24-7 to analyze data, make decisions, take action, he said on the conference call. Salesforce has become right out of the gate here the largest supplier of digital labor, and this is just the beginning. So I think a lot more companies companies are going to start adopting and integrating these AI agents into their workflows, especially after seeing results like this, given how limited these agents still are. Before I end the video, there was one more story this week. E11 Bio is excited to share a major step towards brain mapping at 100x lower cost, making whole brain connectomics at human and mouse scale feasible. Critical for curing brain disorders, building human-like AI systems, and even simulating human brains. So there's an entire thread here that explains this in detail, and I'm going to be honest, a lot of this stuff went right over my head, but this slide I did understand. It states, we still have much work to do in order to scale up prism connectomics to large volumes or an entire mouse brain. But by addressing the biggest cost bottlenecks, an optical mouse connect home could come sooner than expected. We predict it could happen in just five years. So they claim to have found an extremely efficient way to map the brain using AI that when scaled up could eventually lead to the mapping of the entirety of the human brain. This would give us a better understanding of the human brain and potentially lead to major discoveries in neuroscience, bioscience, and even psychology. Anyways, that's all the AI news for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to leave a like. And as always, if you want to stay up to date on future AI news just like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button.